we should be good now. Alright, um, so that's what we're gonna do here. We are going to go through... Um, we're gonna go through a past paper question. Right, and uh, yeah, we're gonna see how to go about doing this. Uh, let me just do something here, okay? All right, good, 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 good. Hi, Michaela, how are you doing? Let's find this question. You're doing good, glad to hear that it was architecture. Not Rihanna, good evening, how are you doing? So let's do the first question from the 2018 paper. Right, I'm gonna share that on my screen. That's this question here. Yeah, I'm just gonna make this. Alright, so for this question, what it says here is this. It says that... We should, um... We are supposed to... Say, so the circle rolling along a straight line with the point P outside its circumference. Okay? And... Uh, we're supposed to consider the locus of point P for one complete evolution of the circle. I'm doing great as well, um, Rihanna. So for this question here now. Construct the locus of point P for one complete revolution of the circle for 11 marks. Name the curve generated in A for two marks and then construct a parabola circuit within a rectangle ABCD 30 by 60 for um, seven marks. I'm just new this over here. And this. Okay, good. So for that, it says that what we should do here is this. I'm gonna show you how to go about doing this question in AutoCAD. All right, what this question is asking us to do is this. It is asking us to do a, um, it's asking us to do a superior trocad, all right? So we have cycloids, we have trocoids, we have epicycloids, we have hypocycloids and um, for this question it's asking us to do a superior trochoid. A superior trochoid just means that that point P is 
as a point that is outside the circle. All right, so in this question here, as we can see here, we have point P, point P right here, and point P is outside the circle. If it was inside the circle, it would have been a, uh, in, an inferior actual point. Right. So I'm going to start off this question the same way we would start off any question, and you start off a question by answering what is given first so we're first going to reproduce what is what was given all right and in this case what was given is this drawing here so we're going to reproduce this part of the drawing okay so it says that from the center to p is 35 and then the diameter for the circle is 50. all right so how do we go about drawing that now so this is what we do so in AutoCAD, we're going to first start off by drawing a circle. I'm going to select center radius. So the diameter is 50. We're going to draw the circle with a radius of 25, about half of 50. All right. So this right here, right now, we're going to make this 25. So that's our circle here. Okay. So with that circle now, we need to find point P, and it says that. From the center of the circle down, point P is going to be 35. So we're going to turn on ortho, draw this line down by 35. Okay, so just 35. So there we have that. Good. Now, what do we do from here? This is what is given to us in the question. Is it this one? It's this one. So in the question it says that it's the ruling outside the circumference of the circle. So first thing first, this line right here, this line is going to have a specific length. The length of this line is going to be equal to the radius of, well, the circumference of our circle. So for this now we need to find the length of this line by finding the circumference of the circle. All right, so the circumference of the circle is going to be this right here. The circumference of the circle is going to be, we can do pi d or 2 pi r. All right, you can use the calculator and autocad. You can either come here and select the calculator or you can just type calculator. So let's do pi d, which is pi times the diameter. So it's pi times 50. And that equals this here 157.079633. All right, so just basically 157.079. So this line that we're going to draw, this line is going to come from here. All right, good. And the length of this line is going to be equal to um 157.079 we can just do two or three decimal decimal places so the three so this is 157.079 there we have that okay now this circle is going to be making one complete revolution okay so it is going to be yeah rolling one time on the line so for that now, this is what we're going to have to do. We are going to have to divide this line into 12 equal parts, okay? So for that, we can use our divide command. So let me just have a, I think a point. Let me do this. So now I'm going to click on this line here and I'm going to, well, let me just use the divide command. So the line to divide, that's the line I want to divide. Into the number of segments, I want 12. And there I have my 12 division points, okay? So I have this divided into 12. So from here, I can do a number of things. But what I am going to do is this. I'm going to draw an X line up here. I'm going to do everything else in construction. Furthermore, this line should have been a construction line also. All right. So let me set a construction layer. So I'm gonna draw a line. I don't even need to draw a line or a point. I can just copy. 
um, copy this line. I don't need to copy the points. I can just copy the line, uh, not line copy. All right, from here to this quadrant right here. Good. And then now from here, what I am going to do is I am going to draw vertical lines from these points. I'll just draw one vertical line from here to this point here. Then I am going to click on this line and I am going to copy this. All right, so I'm going to copy this from here to there to there to there to there to here to here to this point to this point also to this point to that point and to that point okay all right um once we have this now we're going to do this let me draw a center line with a center line so i'll copy this line copy it from here and i'm going to bring it to this point right here okay now before i do anything else uh, let me divide this circle here into 12 equal parts okay so i'm going to click on this circle well before i click on that circle i'm going to draw two lines with my uh let me use my construction layer from here to here and the next line from this quadrant to this quadrant i'm going to click on these two lines i'm going to type array select array polar click in the middle and it divides my circle into 12 equal parts all right now so i have my circle divided into 12 equal parts so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw a line or a number of lines. First line is going to come from this point here. Actually, before I do that, I need to label my points. So let me select a text layer and labeling takes forever. So I always advise students if you can go through your drawings and then add the labels afterwards, it's okay. It's better for time to run out on you when you're doing the labels than for time to run out on you when you are doing your drawings because the labels don't get as you don't get as much marks for labeling as you do for the actual drawings okay all right so for this now let's select text and let me just write start off with zero i'm going to i'm going to copy this and turn off ortho I'm going to copy this to all these points here, to here, all of these points. Normally, if I'm doing this, I just keep the labeling, but because I'm teaching, I think you'll understand it better if it is labeled. So I'm put a label right just down, down here as well, because we're going to have to label that as point P. Uh, I'm going to put one on above. This zero is for this point here, and then this zero is for this point right here. I move the first one. Put one here. Uh, let me just turn off object snap. I don't want my zero snapping to random places. Okay, there we have that. So then now we'll have one more here, 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 there, over here, over here, over here, here, here. And right there, I think that's all the places for my zeros. This is the one I said I'll just I'm just gonna move it and bring it a little bit closer to the and when I'm done with this drawing you'll see that I spent more time labeling than I did in the actual drawing. Alright, so we're gonna start from here and we're going to go in a clockwise direction. No we're going to go anti-clockwise. I'll explain why. The wheel is moving in a clockwise direction, so it's going like this. It's spinning around like that. So if this point is touching the ground, the next point that's going to touch the ground is here because the wheel is moving like this. It is moving in a clockwise direction. So if this line right here represents the ground, this is the point that's touching the ground as the wheel spins and this is going to be the next point touching the ground. So this is going to be point one. So even though it's moving in a clockwise direction, we're going to label it anti-clockwise. I don't know if it makes sense. So there we go, and I'm going to label this from 0 to 12, and I absolutely hate this. I think it is the only thing that takes more time to do in AutoCAD than it does on 
paper and I always say that if anybody knows a faster way to label just let me know because this can't be it there's no way this is it this is not it all right so this is seven here also we have a points eight um, over here we have nine then we have ten eleven and then over here we have point twelve okay nice all right so with that now we're going to label this p also And then we're going to label this. <laughs> All right, this is twelve, but this is also zero. So let, let, let's let's call this zero. Zero and twelve is they are the same points. And I, I I I'll call that zero because this next point is is one. So I don't want to go twelve one. I want to go zero one. So it doesn't matter. And we continue to label all the way to twelve. So that's three over here is four. And then five, six, seven, twelve, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So that's 11 and then now uh, this point right here is 12 okay all right so we have that no this is what we're going to do we're going to draw a series of lines let's use the let's use a actually let's use the construction layer i'm going to draw one line from five here so let me just turn on back ortho and object snap and I'm going to draw a line from here to over right at that point. And then because AutoCAD makes your life easier, you don't need to draw more lines. You just copy. Well, this line is going to be longer. So I should have drawn this one first. So I'll draw this one to here and then I can copy this one. To point 10 and 11 here which is right here and then that's right there nice so these these extra this extra piece here i can just trim it out because i want it to look neat and uniform and then now we can have the center line we can have the center line a different color so let's make the center line like cyan or something like that something that looks nice let's make our center line a cyan line and let's bring it to the front let's do draw order here and bring it to the front like that okay and also let's do draw order for this one this line that comes to p and let's bring this line to the front as well okay nice so what do we do from here now this is what we do from here from here we are going to copy this circle so you see this circle here? I'm going to copy it from the center here. <laughs> and, um, we have more labeling to do, people. I can do it without labeling it, but I want you to understand. So I'm going to label it. So these are our center points here. So this is the center for the first circle, which is be C. And then C1, C2, C all the way to 12 again. Um, don't mix up point 3 with C3. I'll just I'll move that three. No worries. So let's do this all the way up to twelve. Okay, nice. All right. So let me just move this point three here. Let me just move it up a bit to like here, so that. I can 
have this point and not confuse it with point three. So point three is here and then center three is right here. So the first point here, the first the center for this circle here, we're gonna call this C. Let's call that C. The center for the next circle is um C1 and so on and then C2 so on and so forth. I should have just done should I just did instead of one I should have just done C1 and then now I just have to change the numbers instead of writing C as well but that's how it goes. Then we have C3 over here. Hi reach educational services or are we doing? Um I need to make you a moderator here. Let me see if I can make you a moderator over here. Over wait, what am I watching on this? This uh okay, let me make you a moderator. Uh that's moderator. You have managing moderator. Okay, so now you are a moderator. Alright, let's get back to this now. So that's C3. This over here is C4. Then we have C5 and so on, all the way back to 12. So that's C5, C6. You're good. Glad to hear. Glad to hear. C7. Then we have C8. C9. 10, 11. Okay. Uh, okay. C10. And yeah. C11. And C12. And as I said, once the drawing is done, you will see that I spent more time labeling than doing the actual drawing. So now with our wonderfully labeled diagram, we're going to copy this circle now. So we're going to copy the circle from here. So we'll copy from C, which is the center. Let me just turn on ortho and object snap. So we'll copy from here and we're going to copy the circle to the next center point, which is C1. So bring the circle to C1 and then C2, which is here. C3, which is here, C4, which is right here, then C5, and then C6. In reality, I could do this to C6 and then mirror. I don't know, need to go all the way to 12. But for the sake of getting you to understand, I will go all the way to C12. So this is 10, C11, and then finally we have over here, over here, C12. Okay, good, lovely. So with this now, we have our curve. We just need to draw it. And actually, um, I think I did, I did, I did something wrong here. I don't, I didn't do something wrong. I just should have done something else. So what I needed to do was to draw a bigger circle and take the points from that bigger circle. So what I should have is this. I should have this. I should have a circle from C to P. Okay. So this is what I should have. A circle from C to P. Then I would copy that circle from C to P to all our other points. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete all of these circles because these aren't what we need. But that's how it goes sometimes. Sometimes you spend time doing something doing a drawing and then you realize that oh i actually skipped a step and now i have to do back over all of this but no worries all right so with this now let's do this can i can i extend this i should be able to use the extend command on this array to this circle here uh okay all right let me see if i can extend this array here Let's see if I can extend this array instead of some. I want to extend it to here. It's not going to extend, is it? Never mind. No worries. We can delete it. So we can delete this array and then we can do this. I'm not going to relabel. You, you can understand without me having to relabel. So let's do this this time now. So let's draw the line to this quadrant here. 
and then draw this line from this quadrant here to the next quadrant which is this quadrant here so we're going to click on this line and then click on this line and we're going to select um array we're going to type array actually and then click in the middle type array select array polar click in the middle right at c and we have those points now good i'm not going to relabel anything no what i do need to relabel though are not necessarily relabel what i need to redraw are these horizontal lines here because now i'm going to take these horizontal lines from these points and the large circle instead of this circle here so all these horizontal lines we don't really need these ones okay so i'm going to erase all of these except the last lines and the center line so i still, I still need this line because that's the line on which the circle is rolling and i don't need this line though so these are going to extend but that's okay so what we're going to do instead is we're going to copy this line from here now okay and then we're going to bring it to this point right here then we're going to extend not extrude but what we want to do is extend I, I, I think i selected extrude last time i don't know but i'm going to extend all of these up like that okay extend all of those up like that lovely there we have that nicely done so for this now this this is from here to p is 35 okay but ne never mind it's going to work itself out so now we need some lines so we're going to draw this line here and then i'll copy this line so i'll draw this line from eight it's going to go through four it's going to come to this point here once that is done i can click on this and i can copy this now and i'll copy this from here at this point bring it to right here I already have that line so the one from nine is already there so i bring this down to 10 and then this to 11 and we don't necessarily need to bring one from p so that's okay we can bring one from p like right here but it doesn't really matter so we have these now so we're going to do what we did earlier but with the large circle so we're going to copy from c1 to c2 and so on so copy the large circle from c here copy the first one to c1 and then to c2 here we have c3 also have c4 and c5 c6 c7 c8 c9 c10 c11 and c12 is right over here nice as our circles so we have what we need so now all we need to do is to draw our spline so to draw our spline we are going to my computer is dying so to draw our spline we are going to need to um draw select a spline line and then we are going to click on some different points and i'll show you what points we click on in order to get our drawing okay all right so for that now that's what we have let me select the outline and i'm going to select a spline so follow this is just repetition so we start from p which is here okay so that's p where is our next point now our next point let me turn off ortho keep object snap on so p is here so now this circle this circle that comes from c1 let's call it circle one which is this gray circle here and let's call this line line one because it comes from one this line here represents one and eleven so this is circle one right and then this over here is line one so circle one cuts line one here then circle two is here where is line two now where is line two this is line from 10 and two so this is right here so circle two which is this circle here cuts line two here it might look confusing but just look where the next circle cuts the next line so this is where the next circle cuts the next line here and then uh, the next circle cuts the next line here and then the next circle cuts the next line right here and then the next circle cuts the next line right here we can press enter that is half of our trochoid 
we can now mirror this half because then it's symmetrical you could continue or you could mirror the half so let me select the mirror tool and I'm going to mirror this from here down to anywhere just vertically so like that area source object no we want to keep the source object so there we have it and if I should if I should freeze all of these layers if I should freeze that freeze this freeze this then we will see our hyperbola uh, not hyperbola what am I talking about our trochoid so many engineering curves we'll see our trochoid so that's how you go about drawing a superior trochoid now we can look back at the question uh, which is right here okay and for this question no this is 11 marks that we just did all right so this is the thing about bmed it's a long exam it's not long in terms of the time the time is short it's long in terms of the amount of drawing that you have to do so i just did all of that and that's not the entirety of the question that's just part a for part b i would have to name the curve so in naming the curve um in naming the curve i would well not that this in naming the curve it is a superior trochoid so you just select a text where is text select a text oh no i have text text is just frozen right now all right i'm not trying to select the layer autocad i am trying to unfreeze it there so now i can name the curve so you can just label this and you can label this a so i know that this is your drawing and then for the next one you could you could call it b all right so let me copy this again actually instead of moving it so like this here now would be would be your drawing a so let's just call this a mm, common a probably the only time you, you use lowercase in td so that's a so now the next one is b so b is is where you're going to name the curve all right so let me i'm turning on art i just say it's uniform so let's let's call this point b now not b question one b so this now is um this is this curve is called a superior superior trochoid okay and just by naming that curve you get according to this two marks okay so you get two marks for naming the curve no this thing here says to construct a parabola to fit within a rectangle a b c d and this is wild this isn't wild because this is a difficult drawing it's a very simple drawing probably one of the simplest drawings you will do in bmed it's just wild because the length of all of this and then you're, you're going to have five more drawings five more drawings to do it's um it's a lot in a little bit of time but let's do this one now so for c now so for c is where we're going to go about drawing our um we're going to be drawing our parabola using the rectangle method okay so that's a and b i know this is our point c here question c so for question c the parameters for our parabola um it says that we're supposed to draw a parabola within a rectangle a b c d 30 by 60 30 by 60 okay so this is drawing a parabola given the axial length and the span the axial length is like the almost at like the height of the parabola and then the span is the width of the parabola or the span width same thing so we, you could select a rectangle and just make a rectangle 30 by 60 millimeters but i'm actually going to draw it just for the sake of explaining i guess but the, the rectangle does it easier the rectangle command so for this now um bring this down by 60 60 60 and then bring this across by 30 up by wait what wait what wait what did i not go across by 30 i right, so go across by 30 and then go up by 60 again and then we join back this where we started okay lovely so we have this so the first thing we're going to need is well probably not the first thing so when you join a parabola given the axial length and the span what you're going to need to do is you're going to divide the axial length in half the amount that you divide the span into 
So if we divide the span into three, we divide if we divide the span into six, sorry, we divide the axial length into three. In this case, we are going to divide the span into eight, and we're going to divide the axial length into four. Okay, so eight and four is what we're working with. All right, so for that now, so this all go about doing that. So let me use the this cyan color as a center line here, for my points layer. So I'll select this line here. So from this center to that center, we have that. Lovely. Now we are going to. Oh, and by the way, the chat is there. If you're not like following or understanding, or if you have any questions related to or unrelated to the topic, you can ask in the chat. All right. So we're going to divide the span, which is this distance from here to here, the horizontal distance. Why does this look? This look. This looks way more than sixty to me. Let me see if this is indeed 60. This looks, this just looks, it looks like, it looks more than double, doesn't it? Probably it's just, um, probably it's just me. But let me just double check this here. Because it looks very long here. You know, it actually is 60. It actually is 60. And this um actually is 30 as well. It just looks, uh, I mean, it, it is, I guess. All right, so we're going to divide this here into into it okay so we're going to use the divide command so let's divide the span here into it and it doesn't matter if we divide um up here or down here we get the same thing and then we're going to divide the axial length into half of that so we're going to divide the axial length into we're going to divide the axial length into eight, into four yes so we have those points lovely we're almost done with this Actually, I think we are. I don't need to draw these lines, but I think I'm going to draw these lines. Do I have to draw these lines? I don't have to draw these lines. Do I have to draw these lines? I don't have to draw these lines, but I'm going to draw them. I think I have to though. So let me draw a vertical line. So from here down to this point. So from all the points. And then I'm going to copy this line here to all my different points here. I'm going to copy this line from here to there to there and then to there to there to there. Lovely stuff. So then now this is almost done. What we need to do now is from this point, just the center line, I'm going to draw a line to meet this point here, this node here. Also draw next line from this node to the this line here. All of, the, all of them go to that same point and then from here to this point here. So I have those three lines. So again, from this center point here to all these different points on the axial length of our parabola. And then let me just highlight this. And then we can select the mirror tool because it's symmetrical. And just click here and then anywhere below it. And then it's mirrored area source, source object. No, we don't want to erase it, we want to keep it. So we have that now. So I have our parabola. So let me show you how we go about drawing our par parabola. Let me just select the outline layer here. So for the parabola, let me select a spline. Okay. So here, we have a spline selected. Lovely. So this is our first point right here. So the next point now, let me turn off ortho, is where this vertical line meets this diagonal line. This is our next point. And then, I should, uh, let me not start there. I can start there and then mirror, but all right, let me start there and mirror them. So then now, this next one meets this here, and then this one meets this here. And then we come down to this point is our last point down here. Press enter. So that's half of our parabola. To get the next half, we just click here, select the mirror, to mirror tool, click here, and then click anywhere down. Your resource object now. See, the thing I don't like about mirroring is when you mirror, you get a point at the top instead of getting a smooth curve. Um, you do have a, I think you do have a smooth command though. But anyways, sometimes instead of doing that, if it's not too difficult because it doesn't matter in terms of your drawing if you mirror and you get a point looking like that yes you get the full marks but just for me and for it looking decent after all the work that i did for the construction and all of that um when you select your spline instead of starting in the middle up here like i did you could start on one side like over here you can start down here and then this vertical line meets the diagonal line here this next vertical line meets the diagonal line here next vertical meets the next diagonal here then this meets this here 
then your next point is where the vertical meets the diagonal here and then there and then the next vertical meets the next diagonal here and then we end down in this lower corner here and press enter so now if i was to freeze if i were to freeze all of these all of these points you can see now that it gave you a nice curve at the top instead of a point so yeah yeah and with that now let me turn on back my construction remember the construction lines are very important they show the markers that you knew what you were doing and you didn't just copy something or guess something so this is yeah this is done i can i can delete this circle it has been as of great service to us but no longer needed so we have a which is this drawing right here okay we have b which is the name it this curve is called a superior trochoid two marks for that and then seven marks by drawing my parabola and just like that you have your 20 marks for your very first question and now you have five more questions to answer lovely all right so i'm going to end here for today um thank you to everyone here so i'll try to go live every monday and go through these past paper questions of email unit one all right so thank you all for joining and uh yeah have yourselves a great day and if you're new you can subscribe but i'm guessing that most of the people here are people who have already subscribed all right thank you guys have a wonderful evening